G'day there, it's Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab here with another Toolbox Tech Talk. Well, let's get into it. So today, we're gonna look at what I call the Dream Team number three. Now, the Dream Team is where I've combined multiple solar and storage systems uh, from different manufacturers into one unit. Well, one combined storage and generation uh, installation. And uh, today, we're gonna look at a system using three-phase Victron, uh, three-phase Fronius and Redflow, but also the monitoring solutions for that. So I thought I'd just start with explaining how it all goes together with a good old single line diagram. Number three, the first two are good too, but they were different. So number three, let's start. We're connected to a microgrid. The microgrid here is a three-phase uh, system built from Selectronic SP Pro and Powerchain with the Power Plus Energy battery system. Uh, what comes next is two inline meters. We've got a, a Victron meter in, par in series with a Fronius meter. It'll come clear why there's two meters in a minute. Uh, this then connects to the, the heart of the generation system, which is a three-phase Victron MultiPlus 2 system with the five kilowatt units. And uh, that then has a load output to a dedicated load um, switchboard, which at the moment isn't connected to anything, but um, soon will be. On the grid side, or the microgrid side, we've got two solar inverters. One of them is a Fronius Simo Gen 24 10 kilowatt, and it's got a BYD HVM battery with the four battery modules giving it 11.2 kilowatt hours of storage. And also in parallel on the microgrid side, we've got a Fronius Simo 4.5. It's actually quite an old unit, 4.5 kilowatt uh, probably isn't really that popular, but I've got one here at the lab and it's only got solar on it. So we've got two solar arrays connected to each of the Fronius's around at three and a half kilowatts each. So there's the system. Um, now there is some other components which I haven't drawn yet because we do have some DC coupled charging as well from a Victron MPPT, but I might cover that later. So there you go, that's the single line diagram. And we're gonna have a, a closer look at this and work out how all these things come together and why we've built it this way. So behind me is the system that we've been looking at, the Victron MultiPlus 5 kilowatt, the MultiPlus 2s, which can be used on grid or off grid, and they're in a three phase configuration. We've also got the Simo Gen 24, the 10 kilowatt hour unit here, thanks to, to Fronius, thanks very much for that. And from BYD, the HVM, that's the 11.2 kilowatt hour stack, there's four batteries in this stack, they go up to 22 kilowatt hours if you want the full stack of these. Uh, down the end there is another Fronius, this is a Simo, it's a little 4.5 three phase, uh, and we've got the amazing Redflow ZBMs, the flow batteries, are the smallest flow batteries in the world, I believe. Uh, these flow batteries are working in unison, so uh, well, they, they both store 10 kilowatt hours each and provide three kilowatts of power to the loads. Um, so when they're both online, we get double that. And when they're cycling, because uh, occasionally every four days or so, as I mentioned, they will go into a strip phase and basically rebirth themselves and clean up their plates. It's amazing. It's just a battery manufacturing plant. So some other things to note here is there's quite a lot of monitoring going on behind me. Um, We'll look at that in closer detail in a moment. Uh, and down the end there is the switchboards. There's two boards. One is for the grid side and one is for the load side. And the grid side is the one with uh, the two meters in series, the, the Victron meter and the Fronius meter in series. That allows them to see the exchange of energy with the microgrid and to optimize self-use as much as possible. So the way we've got it set up is that it will actually use um, the HVMs first. The HVM battery uh, will be the first to respond and supply power to the loads. And second will be the, the red flows. So um, I'm kind of using the, the power and short discharge rates that we can get out of a, a lithium battery here uh, and using the 20 kilowatt hour storage as my sort of long deep discharge periods. Uh, of course, if neither of these can provide enough uh, for the loads at any one time, then we've got paralleling with the grid, of course. So the microgrid here can supply 
another uh, 25 amps three phase and uh, that should do it for running basically a house. So we've got, as I mentioned, um, two three kilowatt, three and a half kilowatt arrays, one on the Gen 24, one on the older Simo and uh, 30 kilowatt hours of storage roughly uh, here beneath me. The MPPT is the Victron uh, 250 100 amps. So 250 volts maximum input, 100 amps uh, maximum output at battery voltage. In this case, it's a nominal 48 volt uh, system. The, the red flows that are a nominal 48 volt. It's worth pointing out that the, the other battery in this system is a high voltage battery. It's around operating around 200 volts, but it's not parallel to the Victrons on the DC side. It's actually connected to the Fronius Simo Gen 24, and so therefore it manages uh, the battery charge and discharge at the appropriate voltage and current, uh, and sends its output or absorbs the energy from solar or from um, AC sources uh, uh, through the Gen 24. But the reason for the MPPT here, you might think we've got plenty of charging sources, we've got two Simos, we've got a microgrid, why do we need a DC charging source as well? Well, in the case of the Redflow batteries, the most effective way to charge them, particularly when they're completely discharged. So systems here often go on rest when they're not being used. Uh, and so when they're completely discharged, uh, it's a little bit hard to get them started with uh, an AC source. So it is possible. Whereas when you have a DC source, everything just is sweet. But it's also from a design principle, a, a really good idea. I call it black start protection which means that if I were to have an issue whereby uh, the microgrid failed and there was no input from the microgrid uh, and the batteries discharged overnight and went to zero and the inverters turned off, how do I get the thing to charge again in the morning? That's when the DC coupled solution comes in. It's gonna just charge the batteries basically as soon as the sun comes up. So it's a guaranteed way of charging batteries. And from other perspectives, DC charging is probably the smoothest way to charge a battery. There's no ripple at all, it's just DC. But there you go. So DC coupled, AC coupled, uh, all of them together on one system. So this is a bit of a close up on the Z cells. Uh, these, this part here is the stack of plates. Now there's 30 something plates here, uh, all horizontal, each covered with carbon. So they've got a, a plastic plate covered in carbon. Uh, the pumps down here circulate the uh, zinc bromine solution, which is in these tanks here. There's a, a top tank and a bottom tank. Takes it from the bottom tank. It circulates it through what looks like little rivulets, like the, the, the mouth of a river um, pattern in the plates. And it deposits the zinc onto the carbon plates in the charge cycle. And of course, in the reverse, strips it from the plates in the discharge cycle. So you often hear a little trickling sound. It's just like having a fish tank. It's amazing. Um, these, these batteries really feel like they're alive. Um, so this is the control unit for the battery. There's some contactors in here, DC contactors, which you hear clicking on and off occasionally as they're doing their thing, either going into strip mode or something else. And there's also a couple of fans at either end which will vent uh, bromine gas if it starts to build up inside, or heat I guess, um, because bromine actually has quite a low um, boiling point, I think it's around about 56 degrees Celsius, so um, it's important that they manage their, their thermal management. Here at, it, at Mount Tillyborong at the Smart Energy Lab it's pretty cold most of the year, even in summer we're lucky to get over about uh, you know, 30 degrees. So boiling of the bromine is not really an issue. Uh, we have the reverse problem in winter time, we actually have to keep them warm. And underneath each of these, uh, there is a little heat mat. And they're also insulated uh, on some foam from the cold concrete beneath. Now, that's not normally a problem because if you're using them every day, they'll cycle and they'll be fine. But, um, and that, there's a sort of exothermic process that goes on that when they're charging and discharge, they keep themselves warm. Uh, you really, they want to be above about 15 degrees Celsius. So what we do is when we're not using these and they've been sitting cold, sometimes it's only five degrees Celsius uh, in this room, it's an open shed basically, uh, we warm them with these little heat mats. So yeah, that's a kind of a way of dealing with the thermal comfort. It's actually not unusual. Many battery systems, particularly lithium, actually have active heating in them because they too suffer from the cold. Uh, they don't like to charge when they're cold. So yeah, there's ways of managing uh, the thermal stability of a battery system.
This is the latest in the GX range from Victron. It's the Victron Serbo GX. It's basically their smart integrator. Uh, you can connect all the Victron products, well, lots of the Victron products to this. It's got so many ports, it's insane. Everything from fuel levels, um, to the ethernet, to CAN bus, mod bus, uh, VE bus, VE direct, you name it, it's got it. So digital inputs, outputs, uh, all of this connected to this device and an HDMI output for a touchscreen. So what you're looking at here is the touchscreen associated with the Serbo GX, and it's great. Uh, you can do all the programming from this interface, uh, you can monitor it. Uh, it's beautiful looking. I, I think it's one of my favorite displays of any system for a customer to understand how it's working. Just the moving lines is a great idea. So you can see energy flow. You don't have to read numbers and understand is plus mean charge or does it mean discharge? Oh, well, who knows, because there's no convention. But when you can see little dotted lines moving, you know which way the current's flowing and therefore whether it's charging, discharging, or supplying loads. I love it. So that's the Serbo GX with the touchscreen um, through an HDMI output. What you're looking at here is the Switched In Droplet. Now, Switched In is a company that I've had an association with for a very long time here in Australia. Uh, they're based in Newcastle, and they've been great in providing a lot of monitoring and control systems here at the Smart Energy Lab. In this case, this product is primarily monitoring a range of different products. Now, it's kind of one of their special powers, which is that they're um, agnostic to the brand. So they can integrate with many, many brands of inverters, batteries, other systems, even hot water services uh, with smarts on them. So here we're using it as part of my portfolio monitoring. And I can see all of the, currently I think I've got 13 systems being monitored uh, through the portal. And I can burrow down and look at the detail uh, on a web browser or on the app on my phone. Now, the level of resolution is pretty impressive. Uh, you know, I think it's something like 15 minute or less. Uh, I think they can go down to, to really small resolution if they wanted to. Um, so I can see energy flow in real time. Uh, sorry, it's not 15 minutes. It's 15 seconds, sorry, or less. Um, and uh, yeah, I can see the energy flow in real time in the app or on the web page. That's a real asset when you're doing some fault finding or setting up a system. But also um, from portfolio perspective, I can see how all the systems are working as an aggregate. So here at the Smart Energy Lab, we want to run a microgrid. We're off grid, so we run our own grid. And uh, I can see how all the systems are operating on that microgrid. So it's a really great system uh, switched in. And uh, here its primary function is monitoring, though they can do control. And I've got some of them doing control elsewhere. What you're looking at here is the BMS for the Redflow system. Uh, it's a unit that's integral to the way this battery is managed or these batteries are managed and it has a communication interface for uh, things like the Serbo GX which is the Victron uh, sort of smart integration device. It has uh, connections to uh, the battery them themselves so it's got CAN bus, uh, it's got Modbus, it can talk to um, uh, the cloud as well so it's got a cloud interface and on the LAN. So we've got it here set up so uh, we can look at it on a laptop and watch the, um, the battery's performance. Uh, and there's a lot of diagnostics you can do from that uh, interface, whether it's local or through the cloud. So that's the, the BMS for the Z-Cell batteries. Well, that's the dream team number three. Um, looking forward to actually connecting this to my house. I use my house as a dummy load for a lot of the systems I test here, and sometimes they, um, they stay for a long time. So this is a three-phase um, system with about seven kilowatts of solar and about 30 kilowatt hours of battery storage connected to a microgrid for backup. So we'll see how this goes. Um, I'll give you an update on further uh, Toolbox Tech Talks on the Dream Team Mark III. So that's all for today. Thanks for attending as usual. And uh, if you like this, press the, uh, the like button or give us a, a smiley face. Uh, please feel free to subscribe if you want more content like this. And by the way, this is a bit of a teaser for a series I'll be doing on this system. I'm gonna use it to explain how to design a 
off-grid uh, solar and storage system. So this is a bit of a teaser. I'll be featuring this um, particular system, the Dream Team number three, uh, going forward. So uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the ding button so you get updates and you'll, you'll be seeing more content around solar and battery storage, particularly for off-grid. Anyway, thanks everyone. See ya.